Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to a Q&A video. I've done one of these on Patreon before, but this will be the first one on the main channel, and it's to celebrate 4,000 subscribers, so thank you so much. Uh, Patreon folk, you'll probably have already heard the answers to these, um, but grab a cup of tea, or a beverage of your choice, or a snack, um, and we'll have a chat, and any questions that spring off the back of this, um, or that you didn't think of at the time that you want me to answer, put them in the comments down below and we'll continue the chat there because I love talking to you guys. Um, so what I might do is because some of these questions like overlap and bleed into each other, I'll just go through and thank everyone who left a, um, a question and then we'll answer them sort of as they fit together. So thank you to Gabriella Stenberg, Lydia Hoffman, Rorana Redhood, Cesar Ruiz. I wish I could think of a proper username. <laughs> Maya, Skylar Williams. This one's in Japanese, so let's see if I can remember my katakana. Um, Mimu Puro. Oh, if I've gotten that right, I'll be so pleased with myself. <laughs> uh, Carol Cruel, Aiko Chan, um, Charles Fox. Oh, I might mispronounce this one. I'm sorry. Nieri, pick album. Sorry. And also thank you to Anna Rudolph, uh, Veronica. Here's another one I'm going to mispronounce. Hang, Hang, Hang Zoe's wife. Um, Honey Peaches, Athena, Mandy, Vanessa Mulberry, God is an Owl. Um, ten crows in a corner. <laughs> you guys have the best usernames. Um, Reptro, I don't know if I've said you yet. Lone Wolf Bloodfang. Um, there's Cesar Ruiz again. Alley Cat, Sandra Lopez, Tiger Lily T, and the Time Traveler. So I think that's everyone. Um, sorry for mispronouncing anything. But let's answer some questions. Um, just because it's a chatty video, you'll probably hear a bit more background noise than when I sit down to record like episodes of things. So my dog's um, bumping about in the background, so you might hear him. We'll start with Anna Rudolph. Um, your stories are amazing, immersive and so well written. Thank you very much. Um, do you fully write out each series before recording or do you improvise from episode to episode? I improvise from episode to episode. I might have a vague idea of where it's going, um, but generally, yeah, it's in one episode at a time, but that's how I write every sort of project I do. And then Veronica asks a similar question. Do you have every series planned out from beginning to end, or do you improvise each script according to what you want to happen in it? Um, this is part of the reason why I don't plan beginning to end. It's less of what I want to happen into it and what you guys are wanting to happen I think you'd be surprised at how much you and your comments influence what happens in a series um, and how many ideas and uh, things like that I pick up from it um, so doing it episode by episode gives me the the flexibility to change things as um I see feedback come through. And Veronica also asks, do you create your characters based on you or based on what you like to see in a female interest? They're, they're definitely not based on me. They are, yeah, they're, they're characters in their own right and sort of different aspects in what I think an audience would like to see in a romance character. Hangs your, hangs your wife. I'm so sorry. I can't pronounce that. From one writer to another, what steps do you take to overcome or prevent yourself from getting writer's block? As a creative writing major, I don't know how you do it. So I am a professional writer. I ghostwrite romance novels um, <laughs> and I'm like in talks about a feature film script at the moment. Um, I write books under my own name. I've got an agent with that's under my name that we're working on stuff with so I've I do this for a living 
um, and as well as YouTube, um, you know, writing for that. So getting over a writer's block. So for me, part of getting over a writer's block is I don't really have an option. If I want to get paid, I need to write stuff down. I think another element of it is honestly just practice. Um, writing is a talent, but it's also a skill. And I have over the years been able to develop those muscles where I can sit down and just start writing. Um, so I think the more you do it, the easier it will get. And sort of the third thing I think is for me, writer's block isn't so much about not knowing what to write, it's fear and anxiety over thinking that what you are writing isn't any good or that it's incorrect somehow because the most often that I get writer's block is when it's on my personal projects, um, not like my work ones. So that, that says a lot, right? Because if I'm getting paid, I can magically sit down and just smash out ideas and it's all good. But if I'm the only one that is holding myself accountable, that's when I get stuck. So I, I think it's an element of all three of those. So I think my, my best advice would be to just keep doing it. Just write and write and write and write. And it, it, it you will get there. You're not alone in, in that. I think it's every writer ever has struggled with that. So you can do it. I believe in you. Good luck with your degree. Yeah. Um, Honey Peaches says, uh, I want to know how you get your ideas for your audios. They're based around the characters mostly. So the idea of a knight or a pirate or like those sorts of things. And that's where stereotypes um come in handy because that's a really good building block for me to jump off from and see how I can play with it and then also you guys asking I think you would be again surprised how much input you you have had because you know vampire queen exists because someone asked for it and mermaid exists because someone asked for it and lady knight exists because someone asked for it so um I get a lot of my ideas from you and what you would like and your feedback so it's it's a team effort Athena asks do you have a favorite type of audio to record also do you listen to other creators if so who are your favorites um I am really enjoying I'm really enjoying recording episodes that really are pushing my acting chops um so uh, she Wolf is really, really fun for me because I'm properly acting in that one. She's very different to me. Um, so those are really, really fun to do. Also, Mermaid is really fun to do because she's very different from me in sort of the opposite direction as well. So that they're, they're really fun. I like doing those ones. Um, I listen to... I don't listen to a lot of other creators, but I do listen to um, Angels and Bread, his Dark Prince series. If you like Vampire, go and listen to that. That's a brilliant, brilliant series. Um, he was sort of the, the channel that made me realize, oh, I could do this, go in this direction, because he's very, um, that series at least, is very lore heavy and it's very well written and he... He's a brilliant voice actor, so he's able to do multiple characters in one audio, which is really cool. I'm not quite there yet with my voice acting, so I would definitely recommend him for sure. Mandy asks, I've been wondering how tall you are for months. <laughs> um, I'm five foot four, um, so I'm not the tallest individual in the world. Vanessa asks, would love to know your favorite animal and why. Oh... I love so many animals. Um, someone else asked if I had any pets. So I'll answer both of these in one. I, I love snakes. Um, I love reptiles in general, but I think snakes are 
my favorite. Um, I own six snakes. <laughs> I have uh, a diamond python, a marble children's, two Stimpsons, and two Mac pythons. So they're my babies, and I have a rescue greyhound as well, who's chilling up behind me right now. The ultimate goal is to own my own land and have as many rescue animals as I want. Um, so uh, sign up to my Patreon and you can help fund that so I can save. <laughs> um, God is an hour asks, how much do you know about the characters? Do you just come up with what needs to be in the script or do you have whole characters fully worked out? I don't know a whole lot about some characters and others I know a fair bit about. It depends on each one. Um, and that's mostly to do with like how I don't write a whole series in advance. I'll go episode by episode. It allows me the flexibility to um, let those characters develop really organically and respond to situations and see what they're going to do. Like some characters, I, I know their names and their backstories where I haven't put those in a video um, and then others I don't. And this is really depends on each one. Ten Crows in a Corner, which is, I think, my favourite username, um, asks, what is your favourite series that you've worked on so far? And what do you hope to work on in the future? Um, I think my favourite one is She-Wolf, which s surprised me. Close second is Captain. She's always got my heart. But, um, yeah, She-Wolf, I think it was a lot darker than the rest of them um and me personally I'm I'm very strange <laughs> and I don't say that as a, as a negative thing I it's just I generally really am drawn to very dark subject matter and that sort of macabre style of thing so I think venturing into that on this channel and having you guys respond so well um was really really enjoyable and I she sort of tests my acting ability as well so she's really fun to play because she's she's just a bitch but I love her so much she's still, she's got a heart of gold I think you guys know that as well I think she wolf definitely and what do you hope to work on in the future I think springing off from that other darker quote-unquote more serious series as well so yeah I'm happy to to do more if there's anything along those lines you guys would like to see I can leave your suggestions down below for sure Reptro asks what is your favorite color um I'm really drawn to like like rusty coral colors I tend to pick up like oranges and very autumny colors a lot um, so probably, yeah, one of those colours, that, that family of colours. Lone Blood Fang. What is your favourite book that you love to read? My favourite book is Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie, but I also have a tattoo of Virginia Woolf, <laughs> so I like her a lot. Um, I love Jeanette Winterson. I love Stephen King. I'm looking at my bookshelves. I love the Chaos Walking trilogy by Patrick Ness. My favourite book series of all time is uh, The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Um, that's a brilliant series. So those are some of the books I like to read. I wish I could think of a proper username asks, how do you write so well? Um, I have a degree. <laughs> I went to film school when I was 20, 20 to 22. Um, and that was a very intense degree it was like nine till five five days a week and I did um writing directing and producing and then sort of fell into editing in my second year as well I discovered I was really good at that so I, I'm trained as a screenwriter which has transferred really well to the audio medium um so I, I think that's why I'm very good at the dialogue based storytelling because in film that's also sort of all you've got really and then I've been working on a novel under my own name for mm, god past six years it's been a while um and I've got an agent that's uh taking care of that that novel hasn't really gone anywhere 
for various reasons, but we're working on novel number two now as well. And then I ghostwrite. Um, so I ghostwrite like those 99 cent Kindle romance books. I, I write that sort of stuff. Um, so it's a mixture of training, um, a lot of hard work and a lot of time doing all of that work. But thank you for saying I write well. I think it's very, very interesting how many um, people pick up on that, that I'm a, I'm a writer. It's really funny to read that, those sort of comments. You're all very observant. Um, Cesar asks, if you did a live stream, what would it be? I don't know. I really don't. Um, I would have to take suggestions. I, I, it would probably be some form of Q&A or just a, a chat with you guys or maybe a write with me or brainstorm with me or something like that. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Um, I would have to take suggestions. <laughs> That's not a great answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Ali Cat asks, if you've played Animal Crossing, what character would fit you best? If not, what's your favourite animal? I haven't played Animal Crossing. My mum loves Animal Crossing. If not, what's your favourite animal? Snake. Snakes. Particularly diamond pythons. They're the best. My diamond python is so stupid. She's the dumbest creature on the face of the planet, but we love her. Someone has to. Um, <laughs> Sandra Lopez, you've got a few questions. What is your favourite sapphic mu movie? Movie? Movie. Vita and Virginia is a really good movie um, starring Elizabeth Debicki as Virginia Woolf and, oh, what's her name? Gemma Arterton. That's the one as um, Vita Sackville West. That's a really good movie. Um, who is your favourite OC? I think it has to be a tie between the captain and the she-wolf. I love them both very much. Yeah, I think it's a tie between those two. What do you enjoy most about the channel? Um, the interaction with you guys, it's so lovely. You're all just delightful little beans. So that's definitely the, the most fun part. Tiger Lily T, what is the story behind your handle? This is a really boring answer, I'm sorry, but it was just random. <laughs> it was just, it just sounded good as a, as a branding thing. So yeah, that's my very boring answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you sing? No, I can. I can hold a note, um, but I'm not a singer or a musician. The time traveler, favorite food. Um, fun fact, I have really severe food allergies to soy, egg, and all fruit. Yes, all fruit. So um what would be my favorite food i like ice cream i like my sweets there's not a lot i can eat <laughs> you'd be surprised how much fruit is in things oh i'm sorry i'm gonna mispronounce it again nyeri nyeri pick album hello my question may sound a bit silly but my partner and i have been wondering how you create the kissing sounds in your audios we had a really good laugh picturing you having your partner on standby for the for the kissing scenes. <laughs> um, so it's um, very simple. I use my hand. <laughs> so like those old school 90s movies where the kids practice kissing on their hands like that. That's it. That's how I do it. So the mystery exposed. I have told you all my secrets. It'd be a lot easier if I had a pa partner on standby. <laughs> Just be like, come here. I need Foley work. Come, come. <laughs> Do you have an upload schedule of sorts? If so, how does it work? And if not, are you thinking of making one so that we know what to expect X day of the week? So at the moment, um, disregarding all of July, because that was deadline hell month. And just, I made some very poor decisions that month. Don't go strike two books at once when you have like another job on the side of that as well, guys. That was a very bad idea. Lessons were learned. So we're ignoring July existed. Cool, cool. Um, but now my life is back to a sane level. I try and upload every Tuesday. And that's Australian time. So I think for anyone in the Northern Hemisphere, that would be Monday-ish because we're ahead. Um, so I try and upload once a week on Tuesdays. I don't want to go more than seven days without uploading something. As of recording this, I'm trying to do two videos a week and seeing how that goes. 
I've got some like permanent health issues. Like I've got um, some immune system problems and like mental health issues. I'm uh, I I don't know how I function. <laughs> I don't know how I'm a functioning human being if I'm completely honest. Um, so I have a lot of like fatigue issues to do with that. Um, and with my mental health stuff, I, I have very very severe depression and anxiety. But I'm on the right drugs now, so it's all good. Like I'm fine. Um, but it just means I've got like some cognitive issues. My memory isn't great. Um, I've got fatigue issues. So sometimes I just can't do stuff, which is why I'm eternally grateful to you guys being able to make this part of my job so that I can work from home. It's been incredible, um, incredibly helpful. So aiming for two videos a week now, I think I can do it, um, but at the very least there'll be a video every Tuesday Australian time, Monday Northern Hemisphere time. So that's that's the loose schedule. Akuchan asks if there was a possibility to do this full time, would you? It's, it's sort of half time at the moment. If this could be my only job full time, that would be amazing. Absolutely. Um, so like a peek behind the curtain, what I make off Patreon every month, that's half of my monthly income. And then the other half is other random like photo and video editing and writing jobs that I pick up. But um, yeah, you guys are <laughs> you guys are really, really supporting me. You really do have an impact. Um, and this isn't to say, oh, shame on you if you can't join Patreon. No, 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 not at all. Like just watching is a, a, anything like a comment. I love it just so that you understand, like it has a very real impact for me. So it's about half of my um, monthly income at the moment. If I could make that all of my monthly income that would be amazing that would mean more videos for you guys because I would have to do less other jobs uh, I could devote more time to Dizzy Daisy um, so yeah yeah absolutely if it got to that point where um, I just made Dizzy Daisy my my one and only job I would absolutely do it. It's a great job. I love it. Also ask, what's your favorite color or music genre? Of color, I've answered music genre or, well, I love Florence and the Machine. That's my favorite band. Um, I like very heavy stuff at the moment. Who am I listening to at the moment? Ethel Kane, I've just discovered. She's really good. Um, very dark, quirky stuff. I love baby metal. BMC is, I think, my favorite song. <laughs> of, of anything ever it's I love it um London Grammar Ghost Mane uh Poppy I really like Poppy's newer stuff yeah I have a really odd sort of eclectic taste in in music yeah that's sort of what I'm listening to at the moment oh this is the Japanese username if I've gotten this correct I'll be so pleased with myself Mimupuro Mimupuro um, what do you do outside of YouTube? I remember you saying you did writing. The level of not just VA and editing, but the stories you tell is just amazing. Thank you very much. Um, oh, and how does that experience translate for you? What have been some of the issues you've had to overcome starting the channel? Um, so, oh, the writing I answered, so I've got the degree and then I do ghost writing and um, video and photo editing on the side as well. How does this translate for you? I think training my voice has been the trickiest part or the part that's needed the most work for me because writing I can do, editing I can do, um, but I naturally speak very, very quietly. I'm very softly spoken. So that's sort of something I struggle with not struggle with but encounter um in my actual life is that I, I talk very very quietly and people can't hear me um so not only like adjusting the volume and being able to talk louder but 
adapting my voice for each character as well. Not so much accent wise, but using inflections and, and all that sort of stuff. That's been a little challenging as well is um, really getting into the acting side of it. Enjoyable though. I've really, really enjoyed it. The only other issue is sort of finding the time to record the actual audio. That's probably the most difficult part. So I usually record at night because <laughs> I live on my um, my family's property. I live very, very, very rural and it's lambing season at the moment. And so if I record during the day, you can hear all the sheep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and if I record during the day, you can hear all the wild birds um, and you can hear the dogs and like the neighbor's horses and that sort of stuff. So I have to wait until the sheep go to sleep <laughs> to, to record. Um, so that makes scheduling a little difficult. Um, luckily I'm basically nocturnal, so that helps, but yeah, it's, it's more the practical, those sorts of things. Really, really the voice work has been the biggest challenge for me, but I think you can definitely tell the difference since I started. I think there has been a noticeable, um, improvement. I, I felt that there has been anyway. I don't tend to get as hoarse after... Um, recording as I used to. So yeah. Skylar Williams asks, do you have any tropes or cliches that you are particularly fond of or any that you hate and dislike? I tried thinking about this and nothing springs to mind either way. And I think it's because as a writer, everything under the sun has been done. And so tropes and cliches, they're kind of good because they give you a jumping off point and they give you something to play with and mess about with um, instead of just facing a blank page. So I, I really don't feel very strongly about any tropes or cliches, I think because I'm a writer and I, I see them more as tools. Yeah, not, again, not a very interesting answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Maya asks, some of my writer friends wait for inspiration and or ideas before they write. So how do you write spontaneously or just as a nature of my job? If I waited for inspiration to strike, I wouldn't get paid. So <laughs> like, you know, if I'm ghostwriting a book and um, I have a thousand words left to write that day, I've just got to go, well, I, I guess they go into town and do this and talk to this person, let's go. I just, I throw my characters into scenarios and see what they'll do. Um, so I'm, I'm very much a, I will word vomit rather than um, avoid it sort of writer. Cause then at least I've got something on the page to work with. They also ask, I would like to know exactly how the idea of Pirate Queen came about. She, was um the first series on this channel which is crazy to think about she was a character that was bouncing around my head for quite a while actually and I didn't really know what to do with her I, like I didn't know okay do I need to put her in a romance novel do I write a screenplay like what do I do with this character because I loved her so much and she was so vivid but I, she just didn't have a, a home um and and um a while ago I was running a and d campaign as well and I I put a, a version of her in as an NPC just because I, I wanted to do something with her but even then she didn't quite fit um I was just just couldn't get her out of my head and then, like, researching romance novels for my ghostwriting job, discovered these audio um, channels on YouTube and thought, oh, well, that would be something that I could do. And then thought, oh, this is where I can put my pirate captain. Wait, this is it. This is what I can do with her. Oh, amazing. Cool. And so I wrote the first series about her. Um, so that's how she came about. And how she sort of brought Dizzy Daisy about as well. So I'll, I'll always have a, a very soft spot for her. I wish I could think of a proper username, 
uh, asks, how does it feel knowing that your audios probably help people who are struggling with their sexuality have a safe space where they can be themselves? That's very lovely and it makes me feel very good and I love you all very much. <laughs> um, like, I really genuinely do. Like, I, I work very hard to make sure that I'm as inclusive as physically possible. Like, I've got my own chronic health issues. My sister's a wheelchair user. So I, I've i grown up in hospitals I have that sort of a little bit of a different perspective on the world. I think I understand that people are different and you don't know what people are going through and that we all, you know, do our weird little things that we do to to get through the day. And, you know, I was that lonely teenager who was very strange and didn't have anywhere else to go. So I turned to the internet and, you know, wasn't so lonely there anymore. So I'm very aware that people are coming to these channels and these audios looking for that sort of safety um so I'll be damned if I don't take care of you guys it's it's a very very high priority for me to keep this as safe and as happier an environment as possible you guys contribute to that too because I honestly cannot recall a single negative comment in the seven months seven eight months I've been doing this which is astounding like it's the internet like Jesus um so yeah that that will continue on this channel don't worry you're safe here kids Cesar asks if you had a VTuber avatar what would it look like I look if I went to the trouble of getting a VTuber avatar I would legit be a dragon I would make myself look like Saphira from The Inheritance Cycle and I would be a little blue dragon. A hundred percent. Rarana Red Hood asks, have you always wanted to make audio videos or what's there something else? And Lydia Hoffman asks, what made you want to start your channel? So I answer these two together. Um, I didn't always want to do it. The very dry and impersonal sounding answer to this is it was a business decision which sounds awful um but it was you know like I said researching um romance novels for my ghostwriting jobs and just consuming as much of that as I could and discovering these ASMR story channels I it was a light bulb moment of oh I could do that I could definitely do that um between you know my writing experience and my um filmmaking experience it just made sense that I would start this channel and see if it went anywhere see if I could potentially use it to get out of retail which did happen and I love you all very much and thank you um so that that was sort of the the catalyst and then also the community I noticed around ASMR channels was something that really drew me in because you know part of the the experience of it is like you're listening to these videos but you go and read the comments and like see what everyone's saying and like have a chat in there and um, I consistently noticed how lovely all the comment sections were like I've been on the internet for a while guys and to consistently see such lovely groups of people on all of these channels and these videos was really cool I really I like how it's part of watching and listening to these videos is interacting with each other so that's sort of the reason behind starting the channel um but I continue because I love you all and you're very nice and you're my babies and I will take care of you I promise (laughs) I will be your mother duck don't worry um and the last question um Gabriella Stenberg how old are you I am 29 so that's all the questions. Um, thank you for sticking around for this long, if you have stuck around the whole time. Any other questions that you want me to answer, leave them down below. We can continue the chat in the comments. And thank you for 4,000 subscribers. And thank you for being part of the reason why I was able to leave retail. And thank you for listening. And thank you for being beautiful, wonderful little human beings. And I will talk to you later. Bye.